Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and today's topic is this. Week 2 of Build Your Own Research Internship. So today we will be concluding the literature review uh, that we started last week and the topic again advances of uh, deep learning in the domain of medical imaging so we will be finishing that and i will be linking uh, previous week's video in the description box as well so that you can watch it in continuation so let's get straight to it so automated retinal vessel segmentation that is the topic that i selected last week i explained there uh, what a retinal image is and what the goal here is to segment or to only extract the blood vessel regions from these images and retinal vessel segmentation is actually an age-old problem so it has been looked at for over a, a decade now and it's, it's important to understand that there's been a huge uh, number of, of algorithms that have been built for this sort of a task that range from unsupervised which is more rule-based uh, to semi-supervised to fully supervised and deep learning methods so last week i actually looked at the classification based method uh, and today i'm i'm, I'm actually going to be looking at the competitive assessment with the rule-based method as well it's important to note that whenever you're doing literature review don't just focus on understanding the the pipeline or the method steps it's that's important for sure but the other thing that is equally important is the constraints what i mean by constraints is if you're looking at a deep learning model then the constraints is the number of parameters or, or the different param the learning rate it, it could be the optimizer so these could be the different constraints that the model has to abide by and if it's an unsupervised method then it's an optimization problem then you have to you know understand the 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 new medical definition and the computation complexity for the constraints of course there's imaging artifacts and pathology because of which there's a huge amount of variation uh, what I mean here is you will see that the three data sets that I defined the the drive chase and stare all three of them have different fields of view fields of view is just another term of telling us the extent of magnification so what that means if you have one machine learning model that has been trained on a certain high resolution or high magnified image the same machine learning model may not translate if the image is lesser magnified so uh, a, a smaller field of view image which is like 30 to 35 degree field of view if you have trained on it it's probably going to work best on the similar field of view uh, test samples rather than on a you know larger field of view where the magnification is lesser so such as if it's a uh, you know 45 to 55 degree field of view so here I wanted to show that this if this is an example of a fundus image uh, the manual markings or the hand-drawn uh, annotations are in the second column and the automated segmentation that's produced is in the third column you need to understand that there are two kinds of, of uh, mistakes or two kinds of uh, faults uh, that can actually happen in, in and this is very important to understand the performance metrics one is whenever you see these yellow regions and th these are false negatives that means blood vessels that are not detected so you see here uh, the, a lot more finer vessels have been detected but here uh, the finer vessels have not been detected so that's why um, then this would be an example of a false negative where your machine learning uh, algorithm returns falsely negative right it should have been positive but it returns negatives and then in the, in the red cases it's actually false positives where uh, the manual annotator did not you know annotate certain pixels but they are falsely detected as positive so false positives and false negatives together they introduce the error and you know at, at a pixel level so the performance metrics in this case would be accuracy of course which is the sum of the true positives and the true negatives uh, overall uh, specificity which is you know true negatives divided by true negatives plus false positives and sensitivity or which is also known as recall uh, which is true positive divided by true positive plus false negative so these are the three performance metrics that we are going to be looking by so this shows a, a brief table of all the different methods that have been implemented till date and these are the the, the two data sets that we're looking at and this is for the unsupervised vessel segmentation method so you see that uh, the, the the method that 
uh, we came up with back in 2014 that actually had a higher accuracy uh, with respect to sensitivity of course you will see that there are some other methods that have uh, a little higher sensitivity but uh, so sorry specificity the some other methods have a higher specificity however uh, the sensitivity remains very similar so uh, what this means is the number of pixels that are correctly classified we are almost at par with everything um, you know that that was state of the art by 2014 and then stair data set so this is the difference so drive data set has a higher field of view or lesser magnification and stair data set has a lesser field of view or higher magnification and the amount of pathology or the abnorm abnormalities in the retinal images are actually higher in the stair data set. So in a nutshell, the stair data set is a harder classification problem. Drive data set is an easier, relatively easier classification problem. So what we see is that the unsupervised method actually scales pretty well. So the amount of accuracy um, from the easier to the harder data set actually remains pretty similar. And also the, the computation time per image is actually much lesser uh, compared to whatever was the state of the art at that, that particular point of time. So this was the unsupervised versus, uh, you know, the state of the art in the unsupervised realm. Now let's come into the deep learning realm. So what, what we understand is, okay, this is what was done before deep learning came into being. But now the deep learning is, is a reality. What else can we do? So because uh, I did mention that medical images, they are sparse. Uh, there's not a, like you don't get millions of samples to, to train on. So you need to do significant amount of data augmentation, especially for deep learning. So for our uh, the, the sample deliverable for this whole uh, you know ten week program, I am actually going to be looking at the competitive assessment between two data augmentation methods, and both are using the the deep learning framework called UNET, and uh, either it's uh, you know UNET or fully convolutional neural network. So you see it's it's the unit uh, which is in, in both cases and what we will be seeing is what is the importance or the improvement or, or if, if we can do a direct comparison between the augmentation which is provided using Keras, you know the standard augmentation in the Keras uh, platform versus if we actually do uh, you know manual uh, augmentation that means breaking the whole images up in, into tiles so let's look at what both of these uh, github links contain in, in a minute so this is the first um, first uh, github link that i wanted to show and this is the one that is implementing keras uh, well this uh, you know github link was actually not in, uh, this was not uh, implemented for retinal in images but again this is where our out of the box ideas come from the original data set in this case it comes from an isbi challenge and uh, they actually even have a sample of, of the data set so in 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 this particular case the the training and the and the test set of images and I'll show them in, in, in a minute, they are actually black and white. So they, they are like grayscale images. So this is a typical cell uh, pathology uh, image. And what they're doing is they're doing data augmentation using the Keras, um, you know, the, the platform. So what you would need to do in this case, and if you're following along, then what you would need to do is, uh, this is a link and I will be providing the links in the description box below, you will just need to go and hit clone or download. And as soon as you do is, you know, this will be, if, if you say download zip, then all of this folder will, will get downloaded along with the sample images and, and the test and, and the training sample. So here, like I mentioned, then there is the, uh, the, the training data. And of course, for the training, you, you can't just have the images. You should have the image as well as the label, right? Always understand a machine learning algorithm need, requires X and Y. X is your data or your actual image and why is the label or the or the segmented uh, you know regions so e this would be the equivalent segmentation for that particular our, uh, for for that particular grayscale image that i just showed so our job in this particular case as you see it's it's not just uh, straightforward it's not just plug and play because you will have to take something that works for grayscale images and translate that for rgb so that will be the task for this particular data set here. Now let's look at the other one that I will also be looking at. Again, the, the goal remains the same. You go and just hit clone or download. And again, all of this will open and, you know, make sure that you save it. This 
a uh, whole framework has actually been designed for retinal fundus images and this is where the fundus images are actually broken down into a lot of small tiles you know uh, the overlapping patches uh, that i mentioned in my last week's video uh, they actually have some constraints on the dependencies. So, you know, the NumPy, OpenCV, uh, sklearn, and, and all of the versions. Make sure that you're aware of this. If not, you might actually have to go into each and every uh, folder and, and make the upgrades in, in order to match the version that you have. So we will be looking at both of them in, and the, the goal will be to use both of these augmentation methods to then come up with final uh, segmentation performance per image. So we will be not looking at segmentation performance per patch, but we will be looking at segmentation performance per image. And that is the code that we will be following. So next week onwards, uh, I will start implementing this first one using Keras. And following that, whenever you know the, this, this code has been converted to the RGB equivalent, the next task that I will be performing is uh, implementing um, the, the, the second one uh, for, for unit and the tiling method and implementing both and, and showing the difference in performances between them. So hope you have a good week and hey, so you're still here. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and share this video.